A student spoke openly yesterday about his struggles with trying to get out of his past. He drives for one of the world's largest delivery companies, and in those moments of travel, his inner thoughts are taken over by a past that he admits he can't escape. A second student chimed in, allowing us to embrace her entanglement with thoughts that should have faded away long ago. Here's the thing. For 28 years, these pages have been my outlet, my outsource, and my outtake of what's being taken in and taken out. Because these students are amazingly creative, they feel the rough, rugged universe. More of these conversations have got to be shared, not just in my circle, but in your circle as well. It helps to unblock the selfish judgment to help clear the path of tangled up ambitions. If we learned anything yesterday... It was to be free with accepting each other, not in age, not out of respect because of age, but basically to look at each other and not judge the book by its cover. Being creative is the gift. Walking in life without understanding what you feel and how you feel is a war that is going to get worse with time. Hey, it's Harold. This is The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer. I pay attention. I think that's what my dad used to tell me all the time. Well, you just pay attention. He just endlessly said that to me. And then one day I realized, wait a second, why didn't I pay attention? Why didn't I take notes? What was I thinking? This is The Daily Mess. I was blessed to speak with an author yesterday, Susanna Callalan. She brought us the book Brain on Fire. It's now 10 years old millions of people have been reached. Well, knowing this, I wanted to get her feeling, her take on speaking to the future reader. She had never heard of such a term. That's where the real conversation began. Not all writers are open to speak about what they've been gifted with. In every conversation that I have, my goal is to touch the flow of their thoughts, to embrace their visions, to be there as a listener and not a taker. Even Brooke Shields told me that I didn't host the typical style of questions demanding answers because I'm always a student. I want to learn from other creative travelers to take notes of how they learn to get into a project while swaying outward to protect their hearts and imaginations. The forever white belt, a willingness to pick up the tiniest of breadcrumbs because it's my goal to one day create toast. The mind doesn't shut off. Your ambitions do not shut off. What we do is we try to control them. We try to twist them this way and that way. And we want to go outward this way. And when life doesn't deliver the things that you are dreaming about, all of a sudden we get pretty heavy on ourselves. And we start talking to ourselves in ways that it's like, come on, you loser. Come on. What is your problem? See, that, that's where we, we got to stop. And, and I openly admit that I've done that. I've looked at myself in the bathroom mirror and said, hey, ass, what's going on? It's like, why, geez, why did I just do that? Why did I just look at myself and say something like that? Or, or when you, you make a mistake and you call out your name, your full name, your, your birth name, as if your father is about ready to take his belt off and tan your hide. Why are you treating yourself like that? As an open heart and as a cleared mind, being present in mindfulness, being grateful for everything that you're being shared with right now is an opportunity for you to allow your body to feel acceptance. By accepting what is around you, taking the negative, you, you, you know what negative is, you, you see it, identify it, call it out, let, let yourself know what it is. But it doesn't mean you have to let it come in. That's your choice. And you've got that power of choice every day. I write to get my words out there, not necessarily to put on a, on a podcast, but I write to free, to clear, to walk with, not to talk to or talk at, but to share with. I'm Errol, and that's The Daily Mess.